Hopefulness 2.0, May 12th. That's how much time I have. Oh, this is about the time that I got home yesterday. And now it's about time for me to go to work because <laughs> I got to do that overnight tonight and tomorrow. Um, I was going to go hit up uh, the UPS store to attempt to get the other socks that I have and whatever else mail that I've got, which is probably like Fidelity and some other shit. But it just, it doesn't seem practical uh, to be trying to leave at like six o'clock for a shift that's going to be five hours later. Because I mean, what else am I going to do? I mean, sure, I could go there, get them come back, but I don't want to do that. I would rather, if it came down to it, you know, um, work a full overnight until 7 a.m., then get on the train and do it because they'll open up at like eight o'clock, grab them, come home, crash. Uh, I mean, at some point I'm gonna have to move things, uh, move shipments and stuff here, but um, that'll be coming probably within the next month or two. So I, re I renewed it at the end of April. So I've gotten to the end of July, effectively, so. Um, I did get some stuff online. I forgot to get more scrub pads, unfortunately, but I did get some more olive oil. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of olive oil. They didn't have the smaller one. This one is like, ooh, it's like, I wanna say at least twice the amount. I don't know, it could be like, three times the amount, something like that, uh, compared to what I wanted, and it was like two bucks more. I wanted the smaller one just because, you know, shelf space and all the other stuff, and I mean, that was a lot of oil, olive oil. I mean, I, I, I've been using it quite a bit more frequently, but that's not to say that, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm just planning on doing. I don't know. Uh, I made a pizza earlier today. It was pretty good. I, <laughs> I had it sitting out. I was going to make the pizza after I recorded everything last night, and then I just kind of like forgot about it. And then I ended up taking a nap that was a couple hours long. And then I woke up to a fucking Charlie horse, which right now still hurts. That's not as bad because I was like massaging it. And then I got the Xbox controller and I've got this program on there that uh, once you plug it in, you can test it and everything. And the two trigger buttons on the right hand side will turn on. The, the two different vibration pads. The, other, the slower, bigger one and the smaller, faster one. And so you can kind of use those to, you know, help massage a muscle like that. Or if you feel like it, masturbate with it if you want. <laughs> um, I wanted to do it once with uh, an old girlfriend of mine with Metal Gear Solid because it was similar where you could just like go right, you could use this joystick, go right, and it would vibrate one side, you go left, you vibrate the other side. And that was with the Sony PlayStation, but I never had a chance to do that. But, yeah, it's so whatever. Holy shit, hold on. Holy crap. So this is 68 fluid ounces. And it was like, I want to say like 15 bucks. No, 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 it wasn't 15. It's was cheaper than that. Um, I think it's more like seven or eight. This is 64 ounces. And if I'm not mistaken, it was like three bucks. But I mean, it's distilled white vinegar, so that's why it's cheaper. Um, I've been mostly just kind of hibernating, if you will, all day, just kind of conserving energy and not really doing much. Um, it's because I don't want, like, I've been in and out of bed all day, trying to get, you know, good lengthy amounts of rest. Uh, right before I took a shower though, I popped an Adderall, um, it was right around seven o'clock, so it's been about an hour. And I didn't even really have to do much for ironing because I do iron my shirts now uh, since I have a job. And I don't have a whole lot of shirts, but the few shirts that I do have, you know, they're mostly collared. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know, I'm at least somewhat presentable. Um, other guys up there, they're wearing like crew necks and v-necks and whatnot. And it, 
but they're like reasonably stylish too so um, I don't have that much for style uh, I'm not in great shape so I just got what I got and I know what works even though I'm not wearing a belt and doing all the other crap with the, the shiny shoes and shit um, relatively business casual for the most part and I mean the pants that I have you know they they're climbers pants but they also kind of look like business casual khakis um, so it's like whatever it's all the point I bought them that's why they're you know $70 they're in good shape and they last a while and um, all sorts of other shit so anyway so I just ironed the collar for the one shirt because it's not really wrinkly um, I just wanted to get the collar flat and that's all I did so that's ready to go uh, pants pretty much ready to go too um, I could do a one over on those if it comes down to it but uh, yeah tonight oh and I did get my um, my login credentials so I think I might officially be employed <laughs> I mean I know I'm technically employed but I don't know how much you know I don't know where this is all going and I'm not I don't it's like I'm put all my apples or eggs in this basket despite that not being the best idea um that is whatever I had to clip a piece of my fucking skin off because it was like get to that point where it's like hey if you leave it there you're gonna put your hand in a pocket or something and rip a string of flesh from your body and that would not feel good it's only a five hour shift today from what I understand most of it's gonna be done pretty much in the first 45 minutes um, and the guy who's there it's gonna be training me um, he's already kind of showed me some of the stuff and so I'm just gonna be like let's break it down have me do all the stuff in the order that you feel that is optimal just taking trash out stuff like that there's various uh, sort of paperwork stuff that's got to be done too and since I've got the credentials I can log in and then I can you know send out emails or whatever I've got to do um, because there's a lot of, you know, data, there's a lot of documentation, uh, there's vitals that have to be put out if somebody's got, you know, blood pressure that's too high, or if there's any kind of, like, anything that's noteworthy that needs to be put into, um, you know, because they only have, like, so many hours for phone time, and, uh, if somebody is sort of in, in violation, that's going to be put up, or if, if they're not in violation, but they weren't doing this thing, that's, information is going to be put out, or, like, if they didn't go to a group for some reason, like maybe they were put on bed rest or whatever. And then there's specific protocol for that too. Um, and, you know, there's a handbook for it as well um, that I've been kind of like perusing every now and then. I'll probably do some more, especially in these next couple of days. Um, just so I can kind of familiarize myself with it and everything and understand, you know, the rules that they are dealing with. And then, you know, piecing it together with the information I receive from what my actual duties are. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so it's it's not a hard job from what I can tell. It's just there's sort of this constant update kind of thing that needs to be done, which I'm totally down with. I mean, I did that kind of stuff when I was working in security, and I know one of the guys, he was like, you know, I know you've been comparing this security and all that, and it's like, you really shouldn't because of these, 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 these. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not comparing it for those purposes. I'm not comparing it like the us versus them or, you know, thing. I know that this is, this is different. I was a bad security guard because I didn't like the us versus them enforcement format. Um, I like the encouragement. I like talking to them. I like getting pieces of information from them so that I can hopefully better, you know, make their day slightly better. Even if it's just making them laugh. Um, even if it's at my own expense, I don't give a fuck. You know, that's, that's one of the things that I really wish I had been able to pick up sooner as when I was younger, you know, when kids were bullying me at school and making fun of my last name, I wish I had been able to join in, but because of everything else that was going on in my life and the insecurities that I had and everything, it hit too hard. You know, it didn't. To me, that wasn't them potentially bringing me into the fold. That was them shunning me, tossing me to the side. 
and contradictory, contradictorily perhaps? I don't know. Nevertheless, it, it created a greater divide. Um, it made me hostile. It made me more angry. And so they just kept going with it. And so I'm sure they then joined with each other and that was how they got there. And I didn't know that's how boys worked. I'm not saying that's necessarily acceptable, but like there's a certain aspect of laughing at yourself and if you can't laugh at yourself the best thing that somebody can do is when they realize that they made a joke at your expense and you didn't laugh is for them to apologize now children being children they're not going to learn this stuff for the most part um and so you know it's like Again, I wish I wish I had been raised with that information. It would have made life better. But whatever, I wasn't. So now I'm where I'm at. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time with in the Boy Scouts and security and ROTC and, and the military academy and shit. And um, and when I was up in security in uh, Alaska and all that stuff. And so like over time with the homelessness and stuff. It's like I've grown not only a thick skin, but I've also been able to take myself not as seriously. And so, like, when somebody is making fun of me, I generally don't give a shit. Um, and if I can, I'll, I'll add to it. If I can, it, you know, I'll do a yes and. <laughs> I'll throw a little improv if I can. But, you know, and it's like... So far, I've got a good rapport with the guys that are there. Most of them are there because they want help. And they may or may not know exactly what they want with regards to the help. Um, and I know that it's not my job to help them figure it out, but as a person, it kind of is a thing that I want to do. You know, that's why I have some of these conversations with some of them. Like, um, you know, if, if someone's getting on their nerves, I'll try to listen to them for a little bit because, and you know, I'll probe them, but you know, I'm not going to like dive deep into it unless they're willing to. And even then I'm only going to go to a certain level of superficiality because there's only so much time. Um, cause I got a job to do. They basically got a job to do in some capacity or another. And you know, they're going to talk to you if they want to talk to you. They ain't gonna talk. If they don't want to talk to you, they won't. Um, and you know, sometimes people just need a distraction from whatever is going on. They don't necessarily want to talk about that thing. Now I get it. Sometimes it's necessary to talk about that thing. That's reasonable. It can be healthy. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's like read the room. You know, these guys are for here pretty much like thirty days, give or take a few and the whole process to help you know clean up their system make sure they don't have anything in them um, make sure they go through you know a regimented schedule of community and you know have your own isolation whatever but like everything that you're doing throughout the day is structured intentionally for you to recover so that you, after a month, are no longer addicted to whatever substances that you had. Um, it's a stepping stone. It's not a cure. It really, I mean, this is, I now understand why, um, especially like big time celebrities or especially child celebrities, when in, you know, going to rehab four, five, six times, because it's, most of the, it's, it's going to be, largely predicated on what insurance is going to let them do and if there's a specific program link and so on and so on and you might be thinking okay well what are they doing in there you know why are they what, what are these like super resorts or whatever well yeah you know if you can afford it go to a fucking super resort you know it's not there to make you feel better because you did drugs it's there to make you feel better and say i don't need drugs it's there so you can 
have this life that is different from what you had. Now, if you've got the money, go somewhere nicer that has a fucking pool below. We don't have a pool. Um, you know, they can't go anywhere. So there's a treadmill and there's an elliptical, at the very least. There's some, you know, there's a, a number of weights. There's like a squat rack and a bench press and all that. Uh, various dumbbells and whatnot. It's not big, but at the same time, it's like, These things are healthy. And when you have somebody who is... When your life is out of control, often you need somebody to take control. And that is effectively what... You know, rehab is there to not only take control of your life, but then also teach you how to take control of your life through these processes, through these steps. You don't necessarily have to be part of AA. You don't have to do the NA stuff if you don't want to. A lot of people go through it though. Um, a lot of, yeah, and we even have the questions like if, if you're willing to go through it or not. Um, it's not mandatory. And a lot of what is going on isn't mandatory because they're adults. But at the same time, like there's still elements to it where yeah, you might need to treat them like the kids a little bit but do it in with compassion, you know, with children as well, please, you know, be compassionate to children. Even if you're treating a child like a child, don't treat them like shit just because they're a child. Um, and don't do the same thing to adults either. And adults will usually see right through you if you're acting like a piece of shit and if you're treating them like they're less than you. <sighs> it was a long time, Trump. Um, I don't have much time left, but so far it's pretty rewarding. You know, it's going to be kind of revolving door situation where, I mean, literally, I think four people have left since I got there, um, or three, something like that. And then, you know, like three people, four people have shown up since then. Um... You know, four have left and four have come in. So, I mean, like, there's already, within the week that I've been there, you know. Um, and so, you know, I can't, I shouldn't be growing attached to them because, I mean, that's not the point. The point is to be there as a facilitator for their recovery. Um, I'm not a therapist. You know, I'm not a group leader. I'm not one of the volunteers. I'm there to... Make sure they follow the rules and take care of what they need to take care of. But, you know, I'm not an enforcement either, and I'm glad for it, to be honest. Because enforcement sucked. Yeah, I still gotta say no, but at the very least, you know, for now. I don't know how it's gonna go once I'm there and I'm, you know, I'm not training anymore and I'm not the new guy, but I'm also the new guy that like, oh, he's actually here, but he's new enough that he doesn't know everything. Maybe we could take advantage of him. I don't really see too many people likely doing that, but at the same time, you know, I'm keeping an eye out. Um, I won't lose my job just because somebody wants to fuck around. That's why I, you know, try to have a conversation whenever I can. Some people are a little bit more aloof than others. It's fine. It's their prerogative. I'm not gonna force it. I gotta fart. And I gotta go soon. That felt good. Post shower fart. It's a little wetter than it was supposed to be. <laughs> Have fun.